Ah, uh, summer. The season of not opening your curtains and having your friends not shut up about what music festivals they went to. But of course, what I'm here to talk about is the anime that came out during the season. And I'm late to the party again, ain't I? Fuck. Well, I have a lot of shows to get through and not enough time. Let's start. For Joshin, rev your engines, because Attack on Titan returned for another season of German names and failure to set the anime community on fire. But this season has one of the greatest plot twists of the entire series. Even greater than the plot twist that Eren is a Titan. Better than Berthold being a Titan. Even better than Annie being a Titan. The greatest plot twist is that this season has forgettable OP. One interesting thing this uh, opening does is that it actually incorporates a few English lyrics, so I thought I might read a few. <clears throat> What's the lies? What's the truth? What to believe? Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Each night, I feel my leg, my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost, the comrades I've lost. It won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still here. But each episode has been somewhat entertaining for me, as skeptical as I try to be. My reaction to each episode goes something like this. Great time for dramatic pauses and more yaoi bait. Nothing out of the holy shit, that's the money shot. You fucking go killing those other people and doing the one thing you hate the titans for. This attack on time, no one cares about character motivation. Next up on the chopping block, we have I Want You To Make A Disgusted Face And Show Me Your Underwear, a show which was, to everyone's shock, not based on a light novel, but in fact on lightcore porn. But despite the fact it couldn't achieve the title of Fetish The Anime, a title goes to the Monogatari series, it does get the title of Best Anime To Watch IN VR. The best way to watch one of these episodes is to put on a headset and then ad-lib whenever there's a period of silence. It really elevates the experience. <laughs> What? Aren't you an epic gamer? <laughs> Ew, save it for Twitch. So, Vala Evergarden released a special, nothing big, basically Kyoto Animation wanted to make an Idol episode, but realised Idol culture wasn't really a thing in 1919, so they made it to the closest equivalent and made it about opera. But I bring it up now because I'm actually about to write a letter. <clears throat> Dear Respawn Entertainment, I'm a huge fan of your game Titanfall 2. I think that EA purposefully making your game undersell was a disgraceful mistreatment of such a unique game. I'm really looking forward to Jedi Fallen Order, which I will expect to be great considering the skill within the studio. However, if you do ever consider making another Titanfall game, which you don't have to because I think Titanfall 2 is a perfect game, then could you at least do one thing with Titanfall 3? You see, I love the Titans that you have on offer. But I feel there's one thing missing in the Titan department. Let me pilot a motherfucking dragon that turns into a motherfucking jet. Why? Dragon pilot Hisane and Masotan, that's fucking why. You may be asking what Hisane and Masotan is. Well, it's the story of a woman called Amakasu who joins the Air Force and is tasked with flying a dragon that's also disguised as a jet. Weirdly, that wasn't the selling point for me. The thing that drew me in was the fact that it was made by Studio Bones. So, we're already getting off to a great start, but I need more motivation to convince you that it's going to be a good, and there it is. While it technically came out in the spring season, Netflix only released it in the UK just recently. Now, I was going into this without much info, but I'm pleased to say it was worth the wait. The sheer charm that radiates not only off its concept, but also its characters, with memorable figures like Slav Chan, Vape Kun, and the human embodiment of Uwu What's This. The pacing and maturity are actually things that I fucking love, which means the show has the types of jokes and themes you wouldn't often see from anime, ditching the straight man's style of humour in favour of seeing more of an interesting mesh of character types. While it wouldn't satisfy you on the action front, Studio Bones has other series this year to scratch that itch. But their focus on character development is clear for all to see, giving a unique execution of a concept that could easily jump the shark at any point. Although the romance in the second half can be a bit predictable, the expressive character animation can at least keep it fresh. I feel I've gone off topic. Much like summer 2017, Kinema Citrus went off the top spot. Instead of making something which feels like Madoka Episode 3, they give you a show which feels like Madoka before Episode 3. Review Starlight. Plot-wise, it's basically 42nd Street, except everyone's a Japanese lesbian high school girl and replace the tap dancing with iGasmic stage fights. Then you are Kyubei from Madoka Magica, except instead of being a weird rabbit thing, they're a giraffe who sounds like they're having the most furious wank of their life. Now, being what the general populace refers to as a theatre dickhead, I personally adored watching the girls all fighting to see who could get the best role. Except the thing is, they're doing it all wrong. You don't audition for the main part, but instead you aim for the role of the most lines and no singing. They're all in the school at the end of each year, they perform a play called Starlight. 
I mean, it might be a bit repetitive to have that be your only performance, like, at least do the Crucible one year or something. Starlight's the play which holds special significance for the characters, and tells the story of lovers who see a beautiful celestial object, but then they lose memories of each other when they reunite. Holy shit, it happened! But of course you didn't come for the characters or plot. If you know anything about the show, it's that most episodes contain a juicy fight scene slash musical number at the end. And I mean fight scene slash musical number, because these quote-unquote audition battles appear eye candy, with seemingly limitless creativity, even if I fear the participants are going to have to write a 10-page essay on what performance techniques they used afterwards. But in conclusion, this series is pretty banner nice if I do say so myself. Now, of course, that isn't everything, because there's also My Hero Academia Season 3, but the thing is, I've kind of already talked about it. There's nothing really more I can add to criticism with My Hero Academia. Now, what I intended to do was write a parody of Mi Gustas Tu by Manu Chao, entitled Mi Gustas Su, as a parody for why I just love Su Yu. Here was me recording the instrumental. <laughs> Is me recording the vocals. Me gusta la acción, me gusta su. Me gusta la animación, me gusta su. Me gustan los personajes, me gusta su. Me gusta el tono, me gusta su. Needless to say, I've kind of gone off the idea. So I suppose that'll be it for this video. But what am I going to watch in the full season? Well, there's actually a series I've been intending to get into for a very long time. And that series is. <laughs> Actually made a proper motherfucking JoJo's reference. God, that feels good to say.